We're jumping in with a Battletech missile boat build. We're going to explore specific mechs, building that checklist, and ask the question, what makes for a good missile boat tactically on the table? And then I'm going to share with you guys my adjusted list, one of the ways that I approach running a missile boat heavy list. And in many ways, this checklist that we're going to build can apply to any type of Battletech lance that you want to build. So the first thing, jumping in, the idea behind a missile boat, simplifying things a little bit, but getting right to the point, based on the battle value, putting down lots and lots of long-range missiles onto a target. And the advantage of a long-range missile boat, and we do have to get into a short-range missile boat, it, it packs a different type of punch and has a different type of objective, mainly crit-seeking. But the idea with a long-range missile boat is twofold. To naturally, if we're talking inner sphere, to be able to reach out and start plinking away, damaging, or just saturating opposing targets, vehicles, structures, mechs, to the point where you force them to close. You force them to close. They can't sit there and take that type of firepower and as they're closing to get into short range to engage or the preferred range bracket that they might have on their lance, mech, or vehicle, they're continuing to take damage. So this way, the rest of your lance or battle group can then swoop in. But also, based in the rules, there is a very, very unique aspect to long-range missiles with the ability, not using any type of special ammunition or, or not using any type of total warfare expanded rules, but to indirect fire. This idea that normally in Battletech with conventional weapons, you need line of sight. I need to be able to see you. Now, if I can't see all of you, parts might be blocked and obscured. So if I hit that on the chart when I attack, then that goes to the building or the structure or the terrain or the cover. But I, I need to see something on that mech. Indirect fire in the rules, the narrative, it simulates this idea that you have a spotter calling in, relaying in, voxing in, whatever it's going to be, coordinates the position and you are firing indirect. You are firing to bring the missiles down on the target. Maybe like artillery. Now, yes, there are modifiers. So you have the usual modifiers in play, but there's also modifiers based on the spotter and based on the terrain. So it becomes a lot more difficult to hit with indirect fire. But there's that possibility. You could always roll legendary. Or likewise, if you have a, a missile boat and you have it properly kitted out, then I can sit and fire indirect for five, six turns. Do you want to sit there and take it? And um, a lot of mechs that would traditionally be safe and the tactica that they operate, it puts a lot of pressure on indirect fire. I mean, so here's a perfect example. Part luck, but part illustrating. I mean, luck always plays a part in battle tech and in war games. In a recent game, we had a, a stinger working its way on the flank. Now, this was city fight, city tech. The stinger's moving in and out through the streets, running around. Uh, it's going to harass. It's going to spot. It's going to move for a mission objective. It's not like it's a Jenner and it's a major threat. And it's low battle value. So do I want to send out some hover tanks to engage it and skirmish? Could I destroy it if it starts running away? And now if I send out those hovers to engage, because that was the what I could use fast to capture that flank, then I get into the question, I'm tying up more battle value than this thing is worth. And, and that, of course, honestly is a tactica in itself that we want to explore. So I turn my longbows and I start firing on this stinger. I tag it. I blow its leg off. And that's it. It's out of the game. Now, if that was a heavy mech, you wouldn't be sending it alone. But that's an example of traditionally that stinger would be free to operate. It's running up the flank. It's well hidden. What's going to attack it? But it was forced to come into range based on the mission. And I was able to tag it on the second or third shot. Admittedly, luck. But even if you're a mech warrior saying, well, look, these missiles are raining down and, you know, Fritz is a mech commander needs luck. Look, this could be the time when I roll tens or hires. You know, we don't know. And if it's a 20 pack hitting you, even with the spread, that's going to be very, very interesting on how it potentially resolves itself. So in exploring that with a missile boat, those are the advantages to be able to send down lots and lots of missiles to hit direct or indirect, which means once you get into position, 
you have a supporting command of the battlefield forcing your opponent to deal with it because they don't want to sit there. Now, in building a missile boat or selecting a missile boat, this this is, of course, battle value. Battle value is going to dictate everything. But generally, for the battle value, ideally, ideally, and there's a couple of exceptions we'll explore, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for redundancy in the mech, which means it has two LRM packs. This idea, uh, one is none, two is one, three is some. So if I have two LRM missile packs in the mech, that's the redundancy. It increases my chances of hitting. And second, ideally having a 15 or 20 pack. Because if I want, if I do hit, I want to maximize the soak. And on a 15 or 20, if I roll average, that's got some good bite. If I lo- roll legendary, and I can uh, have that across multiple spectrums, meaning I have two, four, six, or more 20 packs, and I light you up with three or four, that is a significant amount of damage. Now, that's on the higher battle value echelon, and we're going to explore that in a moment. But that is the ideal. So when I look at mechs for a missile boat, I say, how many LRM packs does it have? And ideally, is it a 15 or a 20? Now, this is constrained by battle value. Uh, Running forward with your grasshopper, plinking away with an LRM-5. And grasshopper is a a fantastic mech. I consider it an auto-include mech. So I bring up the grasshopper, the hopper, not to disparage it, but to say that that's a different tactic. That's so you have something to shoot on your way in. And I guess you could indirect fire for the lulls or a little bit of a distraction, but that's a completely different machine. An LRM boat would be a longbow, would be an archer. But there are times with lower battle value where I want to get a missile boat in, and we're not talking about vehicles which you cut for battle value, which you could, but an example like a Valkyrie, and I love the Valkyrie. It's a light mech, it's low battle value, it only has one LRM-10, but in a low battle value game, to have an LRM-10 on a pretty fast mech for the battle value, that could classify as a missile boat. So there's this primary classification, but it Admittedly, we have to break those rules. If it's super, super low battle value and I want to get that in, having that ability is very, very important. I can have the Valkyrie hiding somewhere, or equally so, some hovers hiding somewhere, and the main lance, as it engages my opponent, acts as the spotter, and then the Valkyrie is indirect fire. So the question with, and the main challenge with a missile boat, no one's going to let you sit there and shoot. So you have to have a way to defend it. They're going to send something out to deal with it, something out to disrupt it, preferably destroy it, but maybe drive it away or adjust for the range band. And generally speaking, based on the inner sphere tech, uh, I won't say LRMs are overly efficient in terms of internals. They're heavy, they're bulky, and they have ammunition. You've got to deal with ammo, potential ammo explosions. If we look at the longbow, and I routinely play the longbow and it's one of my favorite mechs, um, both the classic unseen reseen and also the primitive and the updated version. There's multiple versions of this model, and I, I think they're all fantastic. But when we look at the longbow, you have so much invested in the two LRM 20s and the two LRM 5s that for the weight class, there's not a lot of armor on there. So you have to be mindful that when someone engages you, there is going to be the potential that you need to deal with it. Now, the two ways to deal with it are first, Embed that longbow in a lance or, or that, su- that missile support mech in a lance. You got to deal with the rest of my lance mates. You got to power through them. And uh, if I have to, I can withdraw with the longbow and have my lance mates put up a wall to prevent you all the while the longbow is shooting. A second way to do that is to have a bodyguard unit or an interception unit, something that hangs out with the, the missile boat and acts as a screening force. Now, the challenge here, of course, is battle value. If I have one longbow, uh, do I want to put a Warhammer next to it? Yeah, that's a fantastic bodyguard mech, but that's a lot of battle value to potentially hang out. And someone might say, well, look, Fritz is, has a, a battle value Warhammer sitting there. If I never engage the the longbow, it's bodyguarding. Yeah, I'm going to eat those 20s and 5s every turn, but I'm ahead on battle value because that Warhammer just to hang, has to hang out there. So you want to look and pick a bodyguard unit or an accompany unit, lowest battle value possible for what's possible. That's how we leverage it. Okay, let's jump over to part two 
And uh, again, this is how I run a longbow or LRM boat missile list. But tactically, this is a list building philosophy that I follow in any game. So I have this idea. I want to put down as many long range missiles as I can. But I need it to work at multiple battle values. Um, I have a problem playing lists, or I should say I don't like developing lists that only work at a certain point value. Because the challenge here is, I don't know what my friend is playing. I don't know what you want to play. And maybe it's a time constraint. Maybe it's like, look, we only have two hours to play Battletech, so let's do 2K battle value. Well, if my missile boat list works at 8K, how do I scale it down to 2K? If I force my opponent to play 8K, maybe they don't have enough stuff on the table and it's not fun for them. So I try to develop a concept that works at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and just, just scales up and up and up. So this way I can adjust. Personally, yes, I want to get the 10K because I want to get all the toys on the table. But I want to be uh, sympathetic to what my opponent wants to play or what the time or the mission dictates or the game dictates. Maybe we're playing two on two. So myself and you playing on one team versus two of our friends. We've got 8K. Well, I can't say, look, I'm taking my 8K list and that's what I'm playing. No, I got to bring it down to four. So the idea begins with a longbow or archers, one archer or one longbow at the lowest, lowest battle value. I then have a demolisher tank as the bodyguard unit. And I selected a demolisher tank because I, I love big guns. I love the auto cannon. It is somewhat high battle value, but the idea is if I park that longbow and archer somewhere, and, and usually it's a longbow. Sometimes if I need the, the laser work or based on the mission, I'll go with the archer. And, and I love the archer too. It's a fantastic machine. But if I park that longbow in a great position and I have that demolisher a few hexes forward, that means anything that comes into close range to deal with the longbow, because you, you want to get close. You want to be able to penetrate that armor. You want to be able to punch it. You want to be able to flash it with medium lasers. You have to navigate through two autocannon 20s. I've got the redundancy. I've got 20 points of damage. The demolisher tank is solid. It's got bite. But most importantly, it's on a turret. So if I get hit with the mode of hits and it's not really moving and it becomes a, essentially a pillbox and we're not playing with the abandonment rules of the crew, that turret is still up. Yes, the turret could get jammed. Yes, weapons could get destroyed. I mean, there's, I can't account for everything. But it works very, very well from that perspective. So that is the core. That is the core. Now, added to that is a dedicated spotter. Usually it's a Karnov. Karnov is the answer to everything with some infantry or and or a locust. Um, I, I give my opponent the choice. If they don't want to play with air units because they're not familiar with the rules or they don't have something to counter, then I go with the locust. And sometimes I go with the locust because I'm going with the Karnov anyway as, as air cavalry or a AC-20 missile boat for the lulls. But I have a dedicated spotter. That spotter is low battle value. I've experimented with hovers. Um, and personal preference is the locust because... As a spotter, it can also engage, and there's some lulls with a locust doing some damage. But one could equally make the argument that a fast-moving hover, dedicated hover, or, or fast vehicle is more efficient battle value-wise and, and less of a target priority. But that is the core. That's the lowest battle value. Now, to that, I'll add on other lance mates, or I'll add on other mechs, or I'll add on other vehicles. Now, as we scale up, so if you come in low battle value, I can play that. As we scale up, I had a second longbow. So it's a demolisher, two longbows, and a dedicated spotter, Karnov or Locust. That's got some bite. I've got four LRM-20s and four LRM-5s sinking in on a target with the demolisher guarding it. Even if something comes in, those longbows on the way in are going to turn to that target and they're going to light it up. That's That's got some bite. It's got some good indirect. It is a battle value buy-in, but we're, we're buying into a theme to make it work. Now, as we add more battle value, this is where things start to change. Because not only can I get more toys on the table, but I need to account for the fact that as I become more of a threat with my missile base, more is going to go against me. More stuff, more battle value, because my opponent has more. So I need to beef up. I need to beef up the bodyguard. I'll take a second demolisher tank. 
I will then start adding, so if I have two longbows, two demolishers, then I will start adding LRM carriers. And this is where things get really interesting because they have the 320 packs. So if I have two LRM carriers, two longbows, that's hundreds of real-time missiles. Uh, 20, 40, 60, that's 120, 20, 40, 20, 40, uh, 5, 5, 5, 5, so two tens. Like that is a, that's a ton of missiles, real-time coming your way. I mean, that's absolutely crazy. I will also upgrade potentially as we move into more battle value, um, depending on the terrain, depending on the mission. Now, I don't meta ahead of time and want to know what my opponent's playing, but I will sometimes swap out the demolishers or shift the demolishers now to an aggressive field clearing role, and I will take a Warhammer or a Thunderbolt. Generally speaking, the Warhammer, and I love both mechs, the Warhammer is better suited I feel because it has the two PPCs to drive at range and it has a variety of close in work weapons. Cause I don't really know necessarily what I'm going to face from that perspective. So, so to have that, that mixture of weapons on the Warhammer, I think it's better suited than the Thunderbolt. And usually when I take a Thunderbolt, I like to be a little bit more aggressive based on the armor configuration, but I love both mechs and they work. And then a final really point efficient screen would be having my Warhammer and or Demolishers, having my Longbows, having my LRM Carriers, and then taking four infantry stands, just conventional infantry, low battle value, no jump infantry, get them into some terrain, get them into hardened structure with um, long-range missiles and just have that little web out there to potentially threaten light mechs and other fast-moving light vehicles, just volume of dice to try and score some hits and drive them off. That is the missile base. And in building this, what I would recommend, any type of, now we're going to move away from the missile base for a second, any type of strategy, if you want to make something happen where you're like, I want to play just a hard-hitting, brawling, short-range missile bonanza, you know, just, just crazy charge in there. Think about the mechs. Think about the vehicles. How do I do it? Low battle value, medium, high, mega high, mega game versus clans. And, and this way, you get to play the list without having it crippled or without having to make internal adjustments that you can know and you can add and you can play. 